Hey, this is Pete Hink giving an update on the seagrass over in Black Point on the Indian River Lagoon. And it's the end of October. Put the cameras down October 29th. And uh, this is what I've seen. Kind of disappointed. The water quality has gone down and it's a drastic, drastic change from what we saw back in July of this year. So looking at this and then looking back in July, this is July right here and you can see what the seagrass looked like at Black Point. It's looking pretty good, seeing a lot of bait fish, seeing some grass. And one thing that's happened back in July is that for the last few months leading up to July it was a very very dry start of the summer. The rainy season we did not have much rain so we didn't have much runoff coming out of the uh, the Sebastian River and uh, just local just lo keeping the local runoff down. So September we had about a record amount of rain you know we had a few storms go by us but we did have a lot of rain and what that did is that pushed all the runoff fertilizers Roundup stuff that we sprayed in the canals and everything even probably run off from septic tanks into the lagoon and um, I could see a big change last month. This is last month. This is what it looked like Seagrass was pretty much wiped out. The water quality was still pretty good Compared to what this month is So what happens when you wipe out the seagrass the seagrass helps filter the water and uh, without seagrass on the bottom, a little bit of wind, it's a little breezy today, kicks up all the sediment. And that's what we have today. A lot of sediment, very little bit of grass showing on the bottom. And um, it's very disappointing and it is somewhat alarming. Now we got to do something. We really have to do something. You know, I don't know how long the lagoon can hold out. And this is the, just Black Point near Sebastian. But the whole lagoon system, you go all the way from Jupiter all the way up to Titusville, it's pretty much the same thing. You got areas that look pretty good. And usually the areas that are looking good do have grass, but then the grass gets wiped out and it's just back to a mud hole. Um, all I got to say is. This next month, there are some elections, so if you're doing an uh, election for your city council, make sure you vote for people in there that are going to do something about the water. And by something, I say we got to reduce the spraying. They're spraying and killing weeds, and the majority of what I see sprayed, I say over 90% of it is just totally unnecessary. And honestly, I think weeds are the good thing and the weeds in these canals and along these ditches and everything else help filter out all all of the uh, impurities and help purify the water why we think we got to kill weeds is just a mystery to me because i think that's actually what could save the lagoon is actually weeds so by killing them all the nutrients the weeds take out of the water gets released back into the water the weeds sink to the bottom and turn to muck and muck is definitely a uh, it's just just it's just a death sentence for the lagoon it just holds so much toxins and stuff in it so guys if you're gonna vote next month make sure you vote for clean water find out what candidates in your city area if you do have an election are gonna do the most to help this you know do your research, do your homework. We got to clean up this lagoon, not only in the Ender River Lagoon, Biscayne Bay, over on the west coast, everywhere, and even inland with the blue green algae. We got to clean up our water, guys. And guess what? It's probably going to be a little more expensive than doing it the old fashioned, spraying chemicals everywhere, but it's a price we're going to have to pay to live in paradise. This is Pete Hink. I'll be out here next month. See what's going on in the lagoon. Hopefully it's better. That's all I can do right now is hope. Till next time. We'll see ya.